This is Dennis Vosper with KBUX and KCNL Radio. We're here at the VFW 769 in Quartzsite, Arizona. We're sitting down with William Shuttleworth, Air Force veteran, 71 years old. He's on a 3,600-mile trek, started in Newberry, Massachusetts, and is making his way all the way down to the USS Midway Museum in San Diego to raise awareness for veterans' issues. How are you doing today, William? Doing good, Dennis. Thanks, Sue. Nice to meet you. Very good. Nice to meet you as well. Um, we just want to sit down and find out a little bit more about the trek and what you're doing. What led to wanting to walk 3,600 miles across the United States? Well, last summer I had the privilege of running a state park campground for California for seven months. 58 sites, and I created three for homeless folks, and they tended to be all veterans. And every day sitting at my picnic table, I would hear the terrible stories of denied benefits, opioid use that the VA put them on at one time suicidal intent, couldn't get a job, uh, complete helplessness and hopelessness. And when I came back, I told my wife, Patty, that since I walked 20 miles a day anyway, what would happen if I walked 20 miles a day in a straight line across America to ignite the spirit that these veterans once had to get the services and advocacy that they deserve? Wow, that's fantastic. And uh, if, if more people had this initiative, I think we'd get a lot more done across the country. So first, thank you for, for what you're doing. Thank you for your service. And uh, I'm, you know, it's a great thing to see that you're getting out there and bringing awareness. Specifically, um, are there, what are some of the key areas that, uh, you know, there are obviously some, some key things on your mind. What are the specific areas that you're bringing the awareness to? Uh, I developed this walk on five major goals. Uh, I want to address uh, veterans taking their own life. Uh, the number now, Dennis, is two an hour, about 50 veterans a day. And those numbers actually don't represent the entire uh, range of uh, people who commit suicide because it doesn't include the state of Texas and California. They don't report that data. And those are the two highest states in America with concentration of veterans. We need to do something other than an 800 number. An 800 number is an insincere, but it is a first step. It, we won't impact a veteran suicide until we come up with a plan in every local community and it can be done it can be done here in court site you have the people you can train them and make an impact almost immediately my second goal is to eliminate homelessness by 20 2030 we can do that almost overnight because uh, Congress has 290 million dollars to allocate that they already allocated for homeless vets and they haven't spent a nickel except in administration you, you divide 62,000 into 290 million, you can build a quality house that could stabilize them. I don't take it when people tell me that they're, vet, that they're homeless by choice. They weren't homeless when they went in the military, were they? They were willing to be, uh, they were willing to put their life on the line. My third goal is to have the same quality medical care for veterans, all veterans, as Congress has. You know, the average congressman can serve two years and they have the Cadillac uh, Golden Crusted Health Care Plan forever. And all they do is cause a ruckus and get reelected. Veteran is willing to give their life for every breath of fresh air that we have. I think that deserves a, a better health care plan. My fourth goal is to have more co veterans uh, elected to Congress. And, and as it was brought out to me today, we actually need more veterans in local government too to shelter and shepherd legislation and policy at all local level to impact all the issues that I'm addressing here nationally. My fifth goal is to raise $100,000 for disabled American veterans. And that's, I have a GoFundMe page on my website, Vets Don't Forget Vets. And all that money, 100% of it, is going to go to the disabled American veterans and I'm going to present a check to the president in front of Congress and ask them why an old man had to do this when they should be doing it. So I left my home on May 15th. I'm into almost my 100th day of walking. It'll be 110 days when I get to San Diego. I'm averaging about 30 miles a day. I have met nothing but guardian angels the entire length of this country. It's just been phenomenal. And uh, how many, in what day do you plan on arriving in San Diego? September 1st. Very good, that'll be a, a, a welcome relief. Are you going to walk back? No, no, my wife, is, my wife is making sure that I'm not because she'll be there that day and has already bought me a ticket and going to get me on the airplane the next morning, so I'm not tempted. <laughs> Very good. Uh, so with, that, with, with all those goals, I mean, that, that sounds like some really good things uh, to accomplish. What can, uh, what can our listeners do 
to get involved uh, and to, to make an impact along with you? They can constantly ask their local uh, uh, state legislatures, uh, congressional leaders, as well as the city councilmen, what are you actually doing? Not what you're mouthing and say you're going to do, but show me, put your money where your mouth is. What are we doing for veterans? Are we truly invested in allocating resources to get what veterans need? I think the other thing is that they can uh, continue to reach out and say, uh, how do we celebrate veterans in this town? I went to one town here in Colorado that had no knowledge, that the mayor had no knowledge and could not tell me the name of a single veteran. Imagine that. I told her that she should be ashamed of herself. And, and she was from that town. She grew up in that town. So we need to make sure that we identify, recognize, celebrate, and honor veterans, not just on Memorial Day, not just on Flag Day. We need to make sure that every veteran has a place of honor in this community. Very good. What, and what is the best way, uh, I know you mentioned your website, um, is that the best way to reach out and get involved? Well, for me it is. My website, Vets Don't Forget Vets, I, I, uh, I'm encouraging everybody to go online and, and donate $5 for every veteran that they love and write a story. Um, I think that's, a, that's, an important, that's an important element. I think it's important that Congress can see this. My story has actually received a lot of national traction. Uh, MSN named me the, uh, the National Hero of the Month. Uh, I've had about 70 television interviews. This might be the 400th radio interview. It, it tells me that nationwide at the local level there is a lot of support for veterans. I want to see that translated into Congress, congressional action. Uh, that's, my, that's my number one goal. We, we can't afford to let that happen. You know when I went in the military in 1970, Dennis, 75% of Congress were veterans. Bob Dole, John McCain, it was that era of people that had veteran interests first and foremost on their on their radar screen. Today there's only eight people, eight percent of Congress are veterans and most of Congress now are, are rich basically self-entitled cupcakes that really have n no awareness of what the average American needs and desires and wants. Their job is to get reelected. I don't know if you know it, but the average congressman sp spends four hours a day calling and asking for money. How can they represent their constituents and when that is the number one focus every single day of their life? Right. Right. So good challenges. Thank you so much for taking some time uh, speaking with us today. William Shuttleworth, making the trek down from Massachusetts all the way to San Diego, 3,600 miles. Uh, again, the website, www.vetsdon'tforgetvets.com. So with that, thank you, Mr. Shuttleworth, thank for your you. time. And Dennis, I'd like to say one more thing, and thank you very much for taking the time. Uh, when, I, when I turned the nightly news on tonight, as I was telling these folks today, you, you see news that would make you want to crawl under your bed and not get out. Mass shootings and fires and random killings and all that. But you put a pair of shoes on, and this is my fifth pair, and walk across America, and you will find and meet the most gracious, kind, hardworking, good-natured people that would give the shirt off the back and want everybody to have the same slice of the American pie that they had. I don't know why the national news and Congress can't capture the essence of America, because that is beautiful. In fact, I say that America the beautiful starts with its people. Very good. Again, thank you so much, Mr. Shuttleworth, for your time. Uh, this is Dennis Vosper with KBUX and KCNL, and uh, we'll head back to uh, your music. Thank you so much.